Hi, I'm Natalie from Positively Primal and we are going to ferment pumpkin seeds. You'll need organic, unsalted, unroasted, raw pumpkin seeds. I used a 32 ounce mason jar, but I'm making a lot of pumpkin seed molds for foster dogs, so decide what size you want to use. So with this mason jar, I'm gonna put approximately two and a half cups. We're gonna leave a little space for expansion. This really isn't needed with pumpkin seeds as it would be with something like an almond. The next thing we're gonna put in is filtered water. And you wanna fill it about halfway. I make my own homemade raw goat's milk kefir. And I let it separate into curds and whey, and I collect my own whey. You can store whey in the fridge for about six months, so I just write the date on the bottom that I created the whey, and I keep it in the fridge for fermentation, like we're doing with pumpkin seeds or vegetables. I use about a cup of whey, and I pour it on top. If you don't have access to whey, there are a couple other hacks that you can do. You would fill it to the very top of the pumpkin seeds with a filtered water and then you would take an acidic medium. You could use something like lemons or even limes and you want to use about two tablespoons. Or you can use raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar and if you don't have either of those, you can use salt. Um, it does not remove phytic acid as much as the acids um, from some research into grains and legumes. Fermentation is the best way to remove phytic acid from seeds and pumpkin seeds are very high in phytic acid. We want to get that off before we give it to our dogs. You would let it soak for a minimum of seven hours up to 12 hours and follow the same process that we're going to do with the whey. We are going to move forward with the fermentation. The benefit of the fermentation is that the lactobacillus is better at removing the phytic acid, it predigests the enzymes, making the nutrients more bioavailable, and it basically does all the work for your dog. You need to leave it in a warm place. If it's winter where you are, just wrap a towel, make sure that it is warm, which helps release that phytic acid. You don't want it in the refrigerator or you don't want it in a very cool home. Now we just need to put something on top and let it sit. I typically get a coffee filter um, and just put a rubber band about it and I put it into the cabinet and let it ferment. And if it is winter time and your house is cool, you might want to just grab a towel and wrap it around to keep it warmer through the night and then just go ahead and let it sit. In summertime, you just put it on your counter. You do not want to put it in your refrigerator. That will stop the fermentation process. It doesn't need to be hot. It should be around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I already set one aside last night with the two and a half cups of raw organic pumpkin seeds, a cup and a half of filtered water, and one cup of raw goat milk kefir whey. And I didn't follow my own advice and I filled it to the top so it's spilling over. <laughs> Remember to do that. Give it some room because they will expand. You can do this next part over the sink. If you've seen my sprouting videos, I collect the water from my sprouts. I use that nutrient dense water for my house plants, my herbs, and in my vegetable garden. And I can tell you, I've already seen quite a bit of improvement in my house plants using the sprouted water. Whey is also really great for your plants. You can just dump this over the sink. Um, so whatever works for you. Need to get a spoon. It's so pa I, like I said, I didn't follow my own advice. I packed it too tight. You need to leave uh, a bit at the top so it has space to expand. Almost like a sour cheesy smell, and that's completely normal when you're using whey. So we have the seeds over a container, which I'm capturing for my plants. Otherwise, um, feel free to do this over the sink. Again, you'd prefer to use filtered water. Um, I use the no chlorine, no fluoride, big Berkey water. And you really wanna get a good rinsing. We're rinsing all that phytic acid that was removed from the fermentation process. Here's my captured water for my plants. So we're gonna have another bowl to 
place that in. At this point, you can feed your dog these rinse seeds. Now, this won't last more than a week in the refrigerator. It will go rancid. As you can see, I made a very large batch. I make them for foster dogs in our rescue. We all want to do these for the three-week series, and they won't stay in the refrigerator for three weeks. So what I do is I blend them up in my Vitamix, and I add a couple things that will increase that bioavailability, and if there is any phytic acid left, I'm going to counter it with some of the foods that I'm going to be mixing in there. We're going to take the three cups of seeds and throw them in the Vitamix. Now you could just blend it like this. Like I said, I'm gonna do the ultimate biohacker approach to making these gel molds. I'm going to use, this is raw goat milk keeper that I have made at home and it's about two cups and remember I have about three cups of raw pumpkin seeds so we're going to pour that entire amount in. A little bit of vitamin C will help any loss of iron so the vitamin C counters that. In Melon B's experiment with dogs Increasing vitamin D made bones stronger regardless of diet and the amount of phytic acid. From that study, those that were on a diet high in phytic acid excreted a lot of calcium. Vitamin D and re-adding calcium mitigates those issues. While we did remove the phytic acid through the fermentation process, being extra conscientious and throwing some raw goat milk. Calcium also balances the high phosphorus content in pumpkin seeds. Vitamin C mitigates the reduction of iron and perhaps other mineral losses from phytic acid. Now we're going to blend this and pour it into gel molds to freeze and use as necessary. Since I'm going to be doing a two and a half week dewormer, I will be keeping this in the freezer and then I'll take the molds the day that I need them so they soften up and they're a little more palatable. At this point, you can add other things that you need for your dog that won't contradict what you have in here, so you don't want to use antimicrobials or antibacterials in here. So I wouldn't be putting coconut oil, um, but you could put some ghee, you could also add colostrum, probiotics. I use SBOs, soil-based organisms for some dogs. So whatever you want to add in that doesn't contradict the main ingredients and the purpose of this, um, that would be fine to do so at this point. All right, we're gonna blend this up and then pour our molds. These are all human grade ingredients. It actually tastes pretty good. This is a really great nutrient dense way to get diversity into your dog's diet that's bioavailable, easy for them to assimilate, and add some really great nutrients that are lacking in some kibble and raw diets, such as manganese and vitamin E. This is a complete vitamin E complex. It's not just your alpha tocopherols, it's your alpha, beta, delta, and gamma tocopherols. This makes it more bioavailable and easier to assimilate. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please consider liking, sharing, or commenting below.